ready? Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping I can click from up here. Um, you might see up here on the screen that uh, 50 years for Confederation College, it's also 50 years for Colleges Ontario. So at the same time that college was starting around Ontario, we also founded Confederation College the exact same year. And it says start of something amazing. I think it's really amazing that at the same time colleges were starting across the province, we started one in northwestern Ontario. So it was at the same time, not lagging behind years later. So I think that's pretty phenomenal. And these are our regional campuses. So we have nine campuses in total, eight in the region, and then our main campus in Thunder Bay. We also have a distance education department. The numbers that are next to the names are how many years those campuses have been in existence. And I think you'll notice that Fort Francis started two years after we founded our main campus. So we've had a regional presence for 48 years, right? And Dryden pretty close behind at 42 years. So look out at 36, and I'm not gonna read all of them to you. But um, I think that's phenomenal. I think it really demonstrates the commitment that Confederation College has to all of the region, right? Um, and is really symbolic of, I think, the collaboration that all of our communities have as we work together to support um, our community members, businesses, industry, etc. cetera. Um, and in fact, Sioux Lookout says 36, but Sioux Lookout and Red Lake, which didn't have a formal campus until about six years ago, uh, were fully supported from Dryden, even prior to founding campuses. So we've had a lot of activity and outreach, not only at these communities where we have campuses, but throughout all of the North, including into First Nation communities. So I can say so much about what Confederation College does, the tricky part was narrowing it down into uh, <coughs> the number of minutes that Ed told me I should try to restrict myself to. So 50 years, 50 years, 42 for driving this year. We're celebrating all year long. So we did officially kick off our launch of our 50th anniversary in January with some events on campus. We will be having more all year, including parties in a bag. So I knew you'd have dessert already, so I didn't bring it today. But if you have events happening at your own business, community organizations you belong to, et cetera, you just want me to come back and bring goodies, we're coming to meetings, offices, you name it, all year with parties in a bag. If you want cupcakes, cakes, cookies, you know, and balloons, and a quick hello, and celebrate with us our birthday. So it's not just coming to us to celebrate with us on campus, we'll bring the party to you. It's booking you for every Monday for the rest of the year. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, you have alumni, right? If you're an alumni or you know alumni, we also have reunions in a bag. So alumni can, yes, John is an alum of Confederation College, good job. And um, you can book a reunion in a bag and do the same thing. So you can get together with other alumni or other people to celebrate. So there will be lots more uh, coming, including some fall homecoming events, including a wine and cheese or wine and appetizer event at the center, which is also <coughs> home to the Dryden campus of Confederation College. So we'll certainly be marketing those more and hope to see you at them as well. <coughs> so we deliver a whole host of programs we'll talk a little bit more about, but how do we do it? Because as you'll see, sometimes our numbers are huge. Like I have one student in travel and tourism here in Dryden this year. How could I possibly run an entire two-year program with only one student? Well, I couldn't. It wouldn't be cost-effective, right? But what we do is we deliver it through an integrated plan with our other regional campuses and distance education. So students access that programming through a number of different methods or modes of delivery, including live, so synchronous live delivery using either video or other web-based conferencing. It's very interactive. They talk to their teacher live. Sometimes that teacher is actually in Dryden teaching to all of the other campuses, including Thunder Bay, and sometimes their teacher is based at another site. So it's live time interaction as if they were um, only in a traditional class in Dryden. And then there's live anytime. So they could be taking it from home, a web-based typically, and more self-paced. So that's not the live interaction with their teachers and classmates. It can be whenever the time works for them. <coughs> 11 o'clock at night, Sunday morning, whatever works. And then there certainly are traditional classes that are face-to-face, -face, teacher only in the classroom in Dryden. And then there's hybrid or blended delivery, so a mix of all of the above. Um, some of the highlights of that plan, well, for fall, 
2016 and winter 2017, we have roughly uh, 385 students across the region in full-time programs, plus a whole host of part-time students moving through programming at their own pace. We offered 26 different programs in the fall here to Dryden community members and across all of our other campuses. So 26 programs available to choose from. 19 were going into their first semester and uh, seven were going into second year. And we actually have a lot of students who go to Thunder Bay and decide they want to return. So they transfer back to us in second year. That's why what's available for second year returning programs is also important because people sometimes want to change the campus that they're continuing at. So in Dryden, we have 72 full-time students right now plus a whole host of uh, part-timers as well, in 18 different programs. So we have 18 different full-time post-secondary programs happening right here. So uh, all the different schools that are represented uh, from the college have programs running. So the School of Health and Community Services, so that'd be things like paramedic, practical nursing, personal support worker, those types of programs, pre-health, so to help people get some of the skills they need in order to enter those career programs, a business, hospitality, media arts, engineering, technology, and trades. We also <coughs> continue to deliver the Bachelor of Science in Nursing program in collaboration with Lakehead University. <laughs> and, um, and so we are in third year. We have 19 students across the region in that program. We are working very hard to try to bring another intake of that program back to the region, uh, fingers crossed, for fall 2018. So we are right now in Dryden piloting the CICE program. We're very, very excited to have this program. It's the first time it's been delivered outside of Thunder Bay. It's the Community Integration Through Collaborative Education program. There are only three students in the program. This is a very special program uh, for very special people, people who may have physical learning or other challenges that would have made it um, nearly impossible for them to take a post-secondary program in any other way. So they have their own core CICE courses to assist them with anything from personal skills to social skills um, to planning, time management, you name it. Um, working with employers, a lot of employability skills. Um, and there's a, a, there's a lot of extra support. So they have their own integration facilitators who attend classes with them, um, take notes, tutor, et cetera. They also take core courses in other programs. So for example, we have a student who's looking at the educational assistant program. So she takes one or two courses in the educational assistant program every semester as well. And it's a two year program. They graduate from the CICE program and, um, and they have placements for three of the four semesters. So the goal is to help them find viable long-term work. Um, and many of them already have jobs for the summer based on the placements that they had uh, this semester. So it's really exciting. Uh, they're probably our favorite students and really uh, keep everybody focused on what we're here for, right? Um, and um, they're just so motivated, so exciting. Um, I'm gonna talk more later about something I want you to do. So um, you have to come see us, come see us and come to our graduations. I'm gonna say that again, you'll hear that a few times. School College Work Initiative is another thing that we absolutely love. So some of you may have heard us talk about this. Some of you are familiar with it. Um, and this is our dual credit programming that we do in collaboration with the high schools. So that means students that are in high school take high school classes and college classes at the same time. They get credit both for high school and college. So sometimes it's a course that we deliver fully and they get both high school credit and college credit and sometimes it's team taught and it's integrated with another high school course and our course. Um, we do more and more college delivered um, and it ranges through a variety of different areas within the college as well. So all of those different schools that we talked about and types of programs are often represented. A picture across the whole region is that we have uh, four different school boards that we work with and three First Nation high schools, 18 different high schools that are receiving dual credit programming across Northwestern, Northwestern Ontario. Um, in Dryden and Sioux Lookout, uh, we partner with six high schools. So the Dryden and Sioux Lookout campuses themselves partner with six different high schools, uh, in including Pelican, um, Pelican uh, Falls First Nation High School. These are the courses that we're currently delivering in Dryden this year. So that we've either delivered in the fall or are currently delivering in the uh, winter term. And then uh, we've had a variety of them for many, many years. And the neat thing about the Building Skills for Success is that we kind of do that in a hybrid model. 
it's uh, the asynchronous, asynchronous live anytime, but it's supported on the high school side by live sessions with the, the uh, dual credit teacher from the high school. So there's a high school teacher attached to that class. They sit down and work with the students weekly. We have the live time with our teacher as well, uh, once a week, and then the rest the students can work on at their own pace. But the other really neat thing is that we're reaching all of the K KPBSB high schools with that class. So it's not only to Dryden, it goes to all of our Hewitt and Patricia District School Board high schools simultaneously. So it's pretty exciting and offers that including to uh, um, Pickle Lake and Ignace where we don't have uh, a physical presence. So it expands dual credit programming mm -hmm. across the whole board. Summer school has been smashingly successful. We've done this for a number of years in Dryden, um, Sioux Lookout and Red Lake. And uh, Red Lake just started doing it last year for summer. 100% success rate for high school students, primarily at risk students, not all of them. <coughs> at risk can be also defined as just not sure what my career path is gonna be, what am I gonna do after high school? And there are a whole lot of people in that boat. <coughs> but we had three <coughs> courses last year in Dryden um, two in Sioux Lookout, all 100% success rate. So they gained their high school credit and their dual credit, and they keep moving forward towards obtaining their OSSD, right? Which is one of the big reasons, it's to try to re-engage students who might not be engaged in high school in continuing, right? Continuing engaging in their classes. I mean, if you can pass my class, why can't you pass the one that you're doing in grade 10, 11, or 12? Right? And they start to see a future and an interest in other possibilities and potentials for themselves. So we absolutely love dual credit, and we're always lobbying the province for more. More money, more opportunities, more diversity in who we can deliver it to. So we have a lot of helpful, friendly staff here at the <coughs> campus who are here to assist all applicants. So people come in for help to apply to Thunder Bay or go elsewhere. We even have people who are writing admissions tests to other schools. Right, other colleges or universities, and we support them with that as well. Real estate exams, you name it. Uh, we've kind of got it all going on in that, <laughs> in that case. Um, so we help students with selecting programs of choice, um, so academic advising, applying to the Ontario College application system, applying for financial aid, recommending other funders or agencies in town that might be able to assist them with funding as well. Um, certainly if they want to go to Thunder Bay uh, applications to residents as well. So lots, lots more. Those are just some examples. Our regional campuses are full service campuses. We're smaller, but I always say uh, while we might be smaller, we're equally as passionate, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, where there's a will, there's a way and we make it happen. So it might not look exactly the same, but all the services are still available. So this is just a listing of some of them uh, from counseling to financial aid tutoring, a variety of tutoring services, peer tutoring, professional tutoring. Uh, we also have lab technicians who provide additional support for clinical skills for paramedics, practical nurses, etc. cetera. Uh, we have our own local student councils at each campus. Uh, so students planning activities on campus, off campus, you name it, uh, we, we have a very engaged student body. Uh, speaking of which, you know, who are our students? Our students are, are quite diverse. We have students who come straight out of high school. We have students who wait a few years and return. We have students who range anywhere from 25 to 55 or older. We have people who are coming to school for the first time, people who are coming back for their second or third career, um, or they're coming back for a postgraduate diploma. So for example, concurrent disorders, people who are working in the nursing field, social work field, um, et cetera, come back to learn more um, so that they can, you know, take that back as professional development into their current fields. So I think our, our student body definitely represents the communities that we live in, and it is quite diverse. In the region, typically our learners are more mature um, in the age category uh, than Thunder Bay tends to be more direct out of high school, but we've seen more balance with that over the last few years where we actually get more and more direct out of high school and Thunder Bay is seeing more and more returning older students. So we do employ quite a number of people. This is just numbers from Dryden. I didn't include Sioux Lookout. Uh, we have close to 40 faculty and staff in Dryden. Just a little bit of breakdown of what that looks like. The majority of them are faculty, um, either full-time or part-time. <coughs> We have approximately 10 professional tutors or lab technicians. We have test invigilators, classroom assistants, and student success advisors. 
we really feel like our college is a community. So it, we're a community college. And there's so much, I could give you a speech for probably an hour about the importance of community colleges and what community colleges represent and why um, uh, I'm really passionate about community colleges, not just here, but everywhere. Um, but to me, um, our campus is a real community. Um, we're part of this community, but on campus, our staff and our students really become um, a support group for one another. Right? We really believe in helping people achieve their goals, uh, whatever they may be, uh, about helping our communities with whatever they need to prosper and be successful. Um, helping individuals move into the careers of their choice or to have professional development skills to enhance the career they're in. And of course, that all helps our businesses, our organizations, our employers, and our communities prosper. So um, I'm not going to read the whole slide to you. I kind of uh, expressed my, my personal thoughts on it already. Did you know about uh, Confederation Bound? <coughs> Some of you might. Deanna probably does. Confederation Bound is for grade 11 students. And uh, the high schools throughout Northwestern Ontario can nominate students in grade 11 um, to receive an offer of admission to the college in grade 11. So it's a conditional offer. Of course, they need to meet all of their final requirements for the program that they're looking for. But they're allowed a certain number of students that they can put forward every year. They get an official offer letter. Typically, I'll even go visit the high school and hand deliver their offer letter and a goodie bag and uh, to them as well. Um, I'd actually like to start giving that to them at our convocation ceremony if I could. I think that would be extra significant. And again, it's about engaging learners early, helping them be um, focused on their future and keeping them motivated towards that goal. So we reserve seats in uh, certain programs for Confederation Bound. And that's for all, um, all of our public school boards and First Nation schools also have that opportunity as well. 95% of our post-secondary programs have embedded um, curriculum outcomes for Indigenous learning, Indigenous learning outcomes. So years ago, people used to have separate courses on things having to do with culture, and um, you'd have to take a separate course, you'd have to choose to take it, um, or you'd have to say, take a separate program. And we do still have programs focused on Aboriginal learning um, or Aboriginal Canadian relations. But this infuses it across all core curriculum. So everybody gains those knowledge, skills, and abilities. <coughs> we are second in the province for graduate satisfaction rate, and our student satisfaction rates meet or exceed the provincial average. We're pretty happy about all of that. Um, but we look at it, of course, as always a continuous improvement model, and what else can we do to continue to improve and to support students. We're pretty excited about Sioux Lookout. It's going to have a new campus in 2018, and we're partnering with the school board on that. So we'll be co-located with the new Sioux Lookout High School. So that was when we were, they were breaking ground last fall. So we're very excited. And we'd like you to join us. There's lots of ways you could join us. Join us by celebrating, right? Join us by celebrating, having those parties in a bag, coming to your morning meetings, Peter. And uh, <laughs> join us as a professional, join our team. You can be a tutor, you can be a teacher, uh, et cetera. So we're a community, you're part of our community too. Um, and you're what helps make us strong and uh, as well. So our convocation is June 20th. You can join us at convocation and celebrate with our graduates. We expect to have between 35 and 40 people graduating from full-time programming this year in Dryden alone. And you can see the numbers there for 20, 230 across the region and DE of that 35 or 40 come from this community or the surrounding area, right? So we're pretty excited about that. So that kind of sums it up because to me, everything uh, leads to that day. Um, we're helping people on the path to the to convocation. Um, and uh, it, it's one of the things that keeps us moving all year round is when we get to stand on the stage and see the graduates walk across it and give them a big hug as they make it to the other side. So if you are available on the 20th, join us at the center at one o'clock and celebrate along with everybody. Okay, because it is a community effort, right? So thank you. Thanks for having me here today. Are there any questions? Good job. You first. And so, Amy, you talked about the um, remote access that Pickle Lake and the yeah. Indians have. 
think of building skills, dual credit. Mm -hmm. um, has Confederation College engaged, or are they planning on engaging some of the remote First Nation communities that offer education up to grade 12? Because I see that as a real motivator for kids. Yes. To so, uh, good question. And one thing I'm going to, uh, yes. And I want to talk about Pecanjicum for a second because we, in fact, have had two graduation ceremonies in Pecanjicum, Convoca Confederation College convocation ceremonies in Pecanjicum. It's the first time that we've ever done convocation not in campus. Um, but we were working with uh, Pecanjicum on their White Feather Forest training initiative for about five, six years. And so Dryden actually was the lead uh, campus on that partnership. And we did in community <coughs> training, and it was also a hybrid, so there were some actual delivery on site in Vikanjikum and some uh, via distance learning um, with support in the community for the students as well. So face-to-face -face support to enhance that. And, um, and we had students graduate from a number of first one-year programs and then also from the forestry program um, to, to meet their needs. So that's just super exciting. That was a very special delivery, of course. Um, but we continue to work with our First Nation um, partners on options, especially remote First Nation partners, on options to continue to do similar types of delivery um, and have supports on the side for them because it really helps them if they have some in-community support uh, in the classroom for the distance learning. Having the distance available from our end is fairly easy. Uh, we want to help them with some infrastructure upgrades because sometimes that can be one of the tricky parts about the, uh, the technology enhanced learning, right? about the connectivity and making sure it's strong and reliable. So absolutely. Yes, I have a question. In the past, when I took Lakehead University <coughs> courses, there were senior citizens that were allowed in at a reduced fee because they wanted mm -hmm. to just learn whatever the topic was. Is there anything like that that you offer? That's a darn good question, and I, I will have to check. Yeah. Norm, you had your hand up? Yeah, thanks, Carl. Uh, Adjoined, I know we all really appreciate having Confederation College here, and it's great to see it's active and expanding its programming access. One, one of your slides similar for some of the other local communities. Having said that, I know that there are a lot of local businesses that are having a hard time finding qualified people. So the high unemployment rate and people looking for workers. Right. Has Confederation College looked at that gap and maybe what are your thoughts about that gap and how potentially they close that and what will Confederation College can or will play in that? Sure. Uh, yes, we do. Um, there's probably a number of things that um, that fall into that category. So um, one, uh, sometimes, so there's a lot of things uh, on this path I'm gonna talk about. One is that sometimes we're offering the program that would fill one of the employment needs, but people aren't, aren't applying to it. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, we can, we market it and market it and market it, um, that it's available. But um, people want to hear an employer say, you know, we have openings in this. Like, there, th sometimes it's like, uh, mining's a really good example, right? We've run mining-related programming for, for years, um, but, but sometimes people won't uh, go take the training because they want to make sure they have a job. And sometimes you have to do the training so that when the jobs are ready, that you are trained to, to fill them. Uh, for example, personal support workers are a good one. There are a lot of need for personal support worker right now, personal support workers. The homes need more, paramed needs more. Sioux Lookout's gonna be building an additional facility, 90 bed facility. They are going to need personal support workers. They talk about this all the time in the community and in the news and wherever they're talking to you know, community groups, et cetera. Um, do you know how many people in Sioux Lookout take the personal support worker program every year? We run it every single year and often twice a year. We have one personal support worker student in Sulaco this year. So we talked to the hospital in Sulaco and said, you know, probably what we need to do is some joint advertising, right? So they hear the messaging from you and us together about the need that you see, 
what you're forecasting. You're not saying Chuck's going to get the job if he takes the program. I mean, he needs to apply like everybody else, and if he's the best candidate, he's going to get the job. But you're letting them know it's coming, and you should have at least this in order to be eligible to apply. So we're looking more and more, and, and with talking more and more with specific uh, businesses, but we're open to doing it with anybody. Um, what, but organizations that we know have expressed this interest to us as well um, at doing it. So uh, we've been talking to a lot of the nursing homes in the region as well about um, similar issues that they've been having and how we can work together, not just, uh, not just Meadow Yawlin. Um, Northwest Employment Works is actually uh, part of Confederation College in Dryby, so it's, it, that, that is not, it, the employment services aren't run by Confederation College everywhere, but Northwest Employment Works, Thunder Bay and Dryden are both actually uh, run by Confederation College. So um, certainly we work closely with them, not just the campus here, but the entire college works closely with the Employment Services Branch um, to look at you know, trends, needs, et cetera. Um, the Can Canadian Ontario Jobs Grant um, you know, was, was recently out the last couple years, and then we've reached out to employers to say, you know, does this fit your need? How might we be able to help you? So Northwest Employment Works certainly has done that and helps with the applications for individual employers but the college and the training division of it um, will also say, is there anything we can do to help you? So one-off applications typically go through new and bigger, um, I need to train X number of people through an extended program when we'd work with them um, in a different way. So we set up and help them with proposals and that kind of thing as well. So that's, I, and I'm only touching on a smattering of things that we look at and try to support we're working very closely with Dry Native Friendship Center and the team that they have together on the Homeward Brown program uh, to try to help um, single mothers with um, job readiness, um, academic readiness, and then coming into um, either on-the-job training or into uh, post-secondary uh, training so that they can gain employment, long-term sustainable employment for themselves and their family. Uh, so we've been a part of that team um, and you know, a number of other initiatives in, in all of the communities, including Dryden's to look out for.